Hello, my name is Shirley Foxnose, city clerk for the city of Tampa, and this is Tampa's Oral Histories. Tampa's Oral Histories is a production of the city clerk's office and city of Tampa television. The purpose of the oral histories is to capture memories of individuals who have made an impact on our city. The oral histories will be part of the city's archives. Today we have the oral history of Catherine Barger, a trailblazer and the first woman elected to Tampa City Council. She is also the 2013 recipient of the Josephine Howard Stafford Memorial Award. Mrs. Barger has many memories of Tampa and of City Council and has much to tell. So without further ado, let's hear from Catherine Barger. I guess we'll start <laughs> with a little bit about the sometimes joke when people say to me, Kathy, where were you born? And I say, New York City, uh, in Bellevue Hospital, where all of the <laughs> very well known <laughs> for its psych ward. <laughs> but it was a teaching hospital, and yeah, that that was one of the big things that it was known for, but it also had a large maternity ward. Well, I started out, uh, first grade was, uh, we lived in Coney Island at the time. New Yorkers, if you live in New York City, you tend to move around quite a bit. <laughs> and, um, I, I started out uh, in Catholic school uh, in our, from Our Lady of Solace Church, which had the school attached, you know, along with the church. And we had, at that time, uh, we were taught all by just the nuns. They didn't have any outside teachers other than nuns like they do today. And it was interesting. Uh, of course, they were kind of off, uh, shall we say, off six months from the Florida school cycles. So when my family moved to Florida, uh, I was in a kind of forced position. I either had to go ahead six months or go behind six months. No choice. Well, I went ahead six months. <laughs> and I still, in many ways, were certain subjects. I found extra easy uh, going to Hillsborough High School in my 10th grade, because most of the things they taught I already learned in the eighth and ninth grade in New York. <laughs> but, uh. So you were ahead. I, I, yeah. I, when, when I started in school, the sister superior told my mom, she said, well, she's awfully young. We usually don't take students till after six years old. And, of course, I was only five years and four months old when I started school. And my mom told sister, she said, well, she said, sister disappeared. She could, uh, she could write. She said, I'm not talking about printing. She said, she could write cursive. She writes her whole alphabet, large letters, you know, capital letters and small ones. And she can do simple math, and she can read some. I, after school, my hobby in the afternoon was hopping on the, the bus out of school and going downtown, downtown Tampa, and walking down Cass Street to the, down by the river. We used to have a big tower there, and it was WALT radio. And I used to go down and hang out at, and on the weekends, I'd hang out down at the radio station. Got 
to meet different dignitaries that came in, different bands, people from the Grand Ole Opera, you name it. I had a chance to meet all these people. And my idea was, oh yeah, when I graduate high school, I'm gonna go into radio. I'm gonna get me a job and I'm gonna be able to go on that radio and be a disc jockey, and yeah. So, upon graduation, I bought down to the radio station and I got, it was owned by a single gentleman, one family, and Mr. Tyson, Walt Tyson. That's where the WALT came from, was from Walt's first name. Anyway, I, I, Mr. Tyson was very courteous and nice with me, and I told him I would like to have a job, and I would like to work for his radio station. I used to come down to city council maybe once a month because we had been annexed into the city of Tampa by, after it got voted down uh, by the referendum, the city still wanted the property, and so the legislature did it. And here we were out there, a part of the city of Tampa. They ran the city line out as far as Fowler Avenue. Uh, there was no, they kept saying, well, you know, we'll have better police protection, we'll get paved streets, whatever. And it never happened. And time passed from back in the 50s when Silver Springs in that area was annexed to Tampa. And the time I started running for office, well, a lot of time had passed and these improvements weren't done. Oh God, like living in a fishbowl. Uh, everybody was watching, mm -hmm. looking to see, well, is she going to mess up some way or another? She going to, you know, cause what? They didn't know. And, oh, uh, it, it just, they were just looking for a woman to make a big mistake, you know. And guess what? It didn't happen. They were all very cautious around me uh, for the first few months. After that, uh, it was just, just another member of council. Most of the things that I actually did you probably won't even find in the city of Tampa records because I did things behind the scenes and quietly and whoever got the glory got the glory. Um, I was responsible for um, the Mickey McGuire Recreation Center at, up at Roman Hiawatha, that property being donated to the city and uh, it was a good piece of property, worth a good bit of money, too. But I went to Dick Greco and I walked in the office and said, Mayor, how would you like to have a new recreation center that gave him the location? He said, Kathy, you, you know we don't have no money and no budget to, to build such a thing. I said, I didn't ask you that. I just asked how you'd like to have one. I said, because I got the folks that are willing to give the building and the property to the city. And they just want me to handle all the paperwork with negotiating with the city to how to go about giving you all the property. And then he got real excited. <laughs> First of all, if you just think you want to run for public office, you want 
say, oh, well, yeah, city council, I've sat in on one or two of their meetings. Sounds interesting. I could do that job. What I did at the time, and of course, it was the old city charter that was, you know, big old book. And on top of that, the entire city codes, all the laws that affected the city of Tampa. I doubt if any other person running for council did what I did, especially since I can't see that much. But I went through and either read myself with my magnifier or I got, sometimes I got my husband, sometimes I got the kids to sit at and read, but we went through the entire city charter, which of course had been renewed because it was obsolete at the time. But anyway, I read through that whole thing and through all of the laws that were on the books, all of the city ordinances that were on the books at the time. And it was so I could be familiar, A, with what does a council member do? It's a part-time job, but how many hours is it really going to take? How many other hats do you get to wear with different intergovernmental agencies? How much time are you willing to commit to the position? Uh, there's a whole lot of things that council truly, you're responsible for the city budget. Thank you.